Uh, we've got Bill Van Lu. We're going to be talking about are our kids technologically literate? I'm Bill Van Lu. I'm the technology specialist for Honey Creek Community School in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Honey Creek is a small K through 8 public charter school um, serving grades K through 8. And I teach technology to kids um, ages 2 through 8. I have ADHD, as do many of my students, so tonight's event format is perfect. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about the question, are our kids technologically literate? A question that often doesn't get asked because we sort of think about the jokes about kids helping us set our VCRs and we just assume. Um, but I think that there are some deeper things built into that. I have three small reasons for caring about this question. My kids are ages 10, 7, and 5. So I'm not just professionally invested in this question as someone who gets paid to teach technology. I have a very personal interest. Even if you don't have kids, though, there are about 3.1 million reasons why you should care about this question. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, that's the projected number of high school graduates by the year 2011, which is a lot of people entering college or entering the workforce. Um, now, we'd really like that next generation to be technology creators, not just technology users. Um, we really wouldn't like them to end up like this so much. Um, and so this idea of technology literacy is incredibly important. Um, and as it happens, uh, we need to, um, I need to wait for a second. We, there are too many big problems uh, that need to be solved that technology can help us solve. Uh, clean energy, clean water for literally millions of people, affordable housing. And these are all things that technology can help us solve. They can't do it for us, but being equipped with the knowledge can help us. So the question comes back, are our kids technology literate? And unfortunately, the answer is not necessarily. Um, now, that kind of runs counterintuitive to what most of us think about, because we think about the prevalence of teens using things like cell phones and texting, using the web. Um, but unfortunately, the use of a high-tech tool doesn't necessarily guarantee technological literacy in its truest sense. And so we have to really kind of dig into what that question means, what it really means to be technologically literate. Um, and so one definition of technology that I like is the use of inanimate objects to extend human capabilities driven by human wants and needs. And so when we look at technology in that way, it becomes much more than just something about tool use but it wraps a whole bunch of big questions about society and about our environment and about other things around there. It becomes a question of why we use technology to help us achieve our goals and not just how do we use a particular tool. Um, so there is a, a solution, thankfully, to some of these thorny issues. And my belief is that that's through the design process and through problem solving. The design process allows us to take a problem, tear it apart, and find a solution to it, which hopefully uh, technology has some part in achieving. Um, naturally, well, not necessarily naturally, but thankfully, uh, this ties in very naturally with inquiry-based learning, which is when we take something and we ask questions, and we do experiments to find out what it is that we're dealing with. And this dovetails beautifully with the curiosity that most kids typically have, but we've got to start early. And so we've got to do really fun, interesting, engaging, hands-on things to help them. What you see on the screen is a fifth grader and an eighth grader working on our uh, school's first Lego League tournament, uh, Robot. And it's a really engaging way. Now, the cool thing is that at the elementary level, um, I've literally seen kids stand up, smile, clap, exclaim from something as simple as making an LED light circuit. It's stuff that they're really excited about. Now, once they get on to middle school, we can tackle kind of thornier problems. So what you see on the screen right there is a solar oven that was built by middle school kids in our appropriate technology class, learning how to use a clean, renewable, sustainable energy source, in this case our sun, to help us solve one of the biggest problems, uh, which is namely, how do you cook your food? Of course, once kids get to high school, they've got all sorts of additional physical capabilities and mental capabilities and learning built in, so they can do really amazing things, like helping build houses for people. Um, so the question kind of becomes then, what can you do to help with all of this? Well, I'm not asking you to become Bill Gates, but what I would like to suggest that you do is become a philanthropist. A friend of my school, talks about a philanthropist as someone who donates their time, talent, or treasure. So I want to talk about those three things for just a sec. First of all, your time. It's amazing what something simple like coming to help pour juice at snack time can help uh, a teacher out in a classroom setting. So um, if you have a little bit of time, you can make a huge impact. Um, the second piece, your talents. Um, there are a lot of incredible people in the audience tonight. Um, if you have some sort of technological talent that you can share, please bring that to the table. This is from the Ann Arbor Mini Maker Fair. So it doesn't have to just be in the school context, but bring that out and share that with kids to help get them engaged. And finally, the last one is easy, treasure. 
um, something not as many of us have these days. Um, but treasure doesn't have to just be money. What you see there is some equipment that someone who works at the U happened to be able to donate to our school. So I'm encouraging all of you to please get in contact with your local schools and those of you who are working with children, thank you so much for helping our next generation. Thanks, Bill.